Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. This week I'm going to give you a couple of tools to help you make better and clearer and more aligned decisions in your life. And it's really simple. So all you need to do when you're making a decision is to find out and try to know yourself more deeply. Make a list of all the things that you want and all the things that you don't want. And something that's really important to remember here is that you get to choose. There's no right things to want and wrong things to want. Try not to listen to the voices of your parents or your peers or whatever else. Try to really connect with yourself and see what it is that you really want from the situation. So there's a number of things that I've used this particular method for. One of the things was when I moved to the UK. And this is such a beautiful example because we all want different things from where we live. And we have different priorities. So I knew that when I moved to the UK, I had a very clear list of what I wanted. I wanted to live somewhere that was beautiful, um, hilly with lots of trees. And that's because I've been living in Botswana for the last, I think it was 14 years, that particular period in Botswana before I moved. And it was the complete opposite. It was incredibly flat. Um, there were more shrubs than trees. And it was very, very dry a lot of the year. So I wanted to have contrast. I wanted to try something completely different. And that's not to say that Bath is better than Botswana. For those people in Botswana who I love very dearly, that is not what I'm saying. I love Botswana. I love the bush. I love the flatness and the massive open skies, but I wanted something different. If you're going to change, why not make that change a pronounced one? What I also knew was that I wanted to be within easy reach of London. I wanted to be able to jump on a train and go to London for the day and come back in the evening. Uh, for business, for social, sort of going to plays and things like that, I wanted it to be accessible. I, When I came here, I went to Ascot briefly for one day. And it wasn't something I originally had on my list of things I wanted and didn't want. But I very quickly realised that Ascot was way, way, way too busy for me. I went walking in a park on a Tuesday lunchtime and it was absolutely heaving. And I thought to myself, if this is a Tuesday lunchtime, I can't imagine what this park would be like on the weekend. And one of the beautiful things about Botswana is there are not many people. And I'm used to having that space. So that was something that very quickly went onto my list. I had to be somewhere where there was enough space that I didn't feel like I was being overwhelmed by lots and lots of people all the time. I wanted to be somewhere near sort of a city or something like that, that had a lot of, um, that was busy and thriving so that I could build my business. I also, something that was very important for me was that the city or wherever it was that I lived or moved to had to be cosmopolitan because my children had grown up, were born and had grown up in Botswana and I wanted them to feel that they could fit into the community that we joined, that they weren't so different, that they were sort of ostracised and sort of looked upon with suspicion. So they, I'm not going to go into any more, you don't need to know all of the criteria. <laughs> I'm kind of getting a bit carried away here. But those were some of the criteria that I had for where we were going to live. And it made it really easy for me to choose, because first of all, I drew a ring about around sort of London as to how far out from London I, I wanted, was willing to go. And I actually have to say, because we actually settled in Bath, that it was a little bit further than I had hoped to be from London originally. But actually, as it's turned out, it's perfect. And it was a couple of people who suggested and said, have you thought of Bath? And when I drove through, it ticked every single box. And that was how it was easy to make a decision. And it has been amazing. We have loved living here. So it was definitely the right way to make that decision. Another decision that I've made in the past is in relationships. And actually one person in one relationship, I'll share just now, gave me an even deeper insight into this particular methodology. So when you go into a relationship, it's important to decide what do you want in a relationship and what don't you want in a relationship, because it's different for all of us. Some people, it might be about status and money, status and money, status. For some people, it's about connection and authenticity. For some people, it's about sharing um, passions and activities with. We all want different things from a relationship. So make sure that you write down that you know what it is you want and what it is you don't want. And it's not just moving houses or relationships. You can do it for work. 
As an entrepreneur, if you're creating a business, you can do it for that. I did it and I didn't even know I was doing it when I set up my wine business because I knew that I had two young kids and I knew I didn't want to work a nine to five and be away from them. So I knew that whatever it was that I did had to allow me to work from home so that I could be with my children most of the time. So it's very important when you're making these decisions in life to know what you do want and know what you don't want. And I'll reiterate again, don't let your limitations narrow what you want and what you don't want. Like when I decided on the wine business, um, a lot of people thought I was mad because I hadn't worked for a while. I'd been a stay-at-home mum while my kids were very young. So I hadn't had a lot of experience. I said, never set up my own business. I'd never worked in my own business. And I remember people sort of questioning whether or not I was being reasonable to set up a business and work from home. But I knew that it was something I really wanted. I knew that it was incredibly important for me to be at home for my children. And that was why I put it on my list. So don't, don't discount something. Put it in there if it's important to you and be true to who you are. And the final thing that I wanted to say is, um, if you remember, I mentioned that somebody I knew had given me a very good tip when it comes to relationships. And I'll share this final bit with you. It's about non-negotiables. So it was actually a guy that I went out with. He, we were chatting early on in the relationship and he asked me what were my non-negotiables. Now, I'm a people pleaser, that's where I come from. So non-negotiables just weren't in my vocabulary because I would bend over backwards and do all sorts just to keep somebody happy. And at first I was quite taken aback and quite affronted that love didn't trumpet, tri tri triumph everything and that there was such a thing as a non-negotiable and that somebody would actually say they didn't want to be with me because I didn't meet their non-negotiables. But actually once I'd got over the shock of the non-negotiables, I kind of found it liberating because I thought, well, if he's got non-negotiables, then I'm allowed non-negotiables as well. And it can really help when you are starting a new relationship to know what, what, what is the line that is drawn in the sand for you. What is it that you are not willing to continue a relationship for? And it can also be very helpful in deciding if this is the right relationship for you or not. It doesn't make the other person wrong. It doesn't make you wrong. It's just something that you are not prepared to live with or without. And it's entirely up to you what it is that you choose to do that with. So just to sum up for today, when you're making big decisions in life, be very clear about what you want and what you don't want. Don't let other people's opinions and limitations sway what you want and what you don't want. And try to notice if your limitations of what you believe is possible are also hindering your decision making. Because when you include things that you don't realise could be a possibility, suddenly your options can open up and you realise you can have more than you actually thought you could. And finally, the non-negotiables. Make sure that you know what it is that you will not tolerate in your life or that you cannot live without. And I've given the example was in regards to relationships, but it doesn't have to be in regards to relationships. It could be about where you're living, it could be the work that you're doing, it could be your ethics and your morals. It's entirely up to you. I hope you've enjoyed this video today and if you want any to link to any of my resources or organise a chemistry call with me to see if coaching with, with me is something you'd be interested in, then just have a look at the links below. I'll also pop a link to the free courses that I offer as well and to my paid courses as well in case that's something you're interested in. Thanks so very much for taking the time to listen to this with me today. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.